do people get annoyed when it's very noisy? It's only when they don't have a choice. We are designing the experiences, so design shouldn't only look nice, but should perform. It's one of the most um, viable things that you can be challenged on or um, held responsible for, because you can't see it and you can't solve the solution after the fact. You have to so solve it during. When you're thinking of uh, sustainability, great acoustics, amazing MEP performances and so on, then and looking at achieving that great design, it's a lot more challenging. When there's always uh, too much sound around you, it's, uh, it's, it's annoying, you know, it's like uh, in my office, for example, now I see uh, some people, they put a little pancart, you know, I'm on a hard task, please do not disturb me. From my 13 years out being here, we've always had to address acoustics. So you, you've dealt with glass partitions, things like that. That was the main acoustic treatment um, from noise transference from one room to another. Now in the last, I would say, four years, acousticians have been a necessity, recommended by the project manager or the client to bring on board. Acoustics is related to well-being. Acoustics is related to productivity. It is also related to retention, because if I'm in a place that does not allow me to focus, it is going to cause clutter in my mind and it forces me to think about places where I can be quiet. I still find it the most challenging is achieving great, simple, clean design with the best outcomes in terms of furniture, acoustics, beautiful lighting and above all its performance. So the technical side of it is the most challenging. So achieving that clean ceiling which performs from an acoustic point of view, but also the lux levels are right and the natural light penetrates the space in the right way. I think that's the beauty of really doing great design, considering everything. There is two types of uh, acoustic. There is the acoustic to separate, I mean, to kill the sound between one room to the other room, like a manager room, a director room, or a meeting room, and the rest, because confidentiality or not to be uh, disturbed by the noise. So that's easy. This is the first requirements they ask, uh, so a certain level of clients. And, uh, but then we come with a solution of the acoustic for you know, to the sound absorption uh, with different materials that are in the market today for the staff that is in the open space. And that's something we have to educate the clients and to bring these solutions. So do is a very specific one. Uh, it was extremely exciting and quite complex. And the main focus was bringing people back together and opening that communication, breaking the barriers, which means instantly, you know, noise pollution, issues with the acoustics and so on. We have isolated the loud zones and communal zones from the workplace in a way that we have created a ring uh, around the, the core with all the specific communal spaces, uh, collaboration spaces that potentially could cause this noise pollution within the open plan. The space that we're designing is a community workspace, but it's meant for creatives only which means you have architects, designers, photographers, and for a lot of us, we like the chatter because it's also a way of learning from other people, right? So the idea behind the space is that we have to create spaces that allow for noise, that attracts people there, and that creates a community space. And then you also offer people the choice of moving into their sanctuaries or smaller spaces where they can focus and work. So these are people who are renting spaces, but they're also renting the experience of being in a community. So in that case, noise is not a problem, Education of what the client now understands about reverberation and noise transference is prominent in a design. So bringing that in in the beginning, because when you're laying out your projects, the wall thicknesses of what you're doing, how you're trying to go slab to slab on walls, the treatment of additional layers on those walls is, is, is prevalent in what we do. So from the beginning, it's really, really important. My personal favorites are the ones that are concealed and you cannot see them. They're integrated as part of the structure of the ambience rather than add-ons that are more decorative. Now we're looking at curves and how we can apply the acoustics into a curve partition or how we can treat the glazing that still require acoustics. So the micro perforated film that can go on that still uh, gives you a bit of acoustic uh, performance. So, Elements like that have been evolving for the past two years. As designers, we tend to be lazy sometimes and we, we know certain products work, you keep going to them. What I feel is changing now is you have more experts and you have more people getting into these specialist realms, right? So for example, you have suppliers coming and telling us, you remember the acoustic pad that you saw before? Here's another version of that. Or here's how you can use it differently, right? 
and that then makes even the client more interested. Because if I'm saying, I'm going to put an acoustic wall, he knows it's probably going to be fabric. But now when I tell him, oh, I'm sorry, but it's going to be wood wool, it's going to be acoustic felt, it's going to be something else, that then makes him interested in the product because it looks good and it's more value for him.